Hey church family, I hope that you are doing well. It is Wednesday, the 21st of September, and so I'm really excited about this weekend. We are heading into our study into getting into the text uh, right in verses 1 and 2 of 2 Peter chapter 1. So really looking forward to that time with you. If you remember when we went through our 1 Peter uh, series, uh, Living as Exiles, we just found that it was so relevant to where we are as humans, where we are as Americans, where we are as Christians living in the Northeast. And just this idea that we are sojourners, that we are together in this world, not just waiting for the other shoe to drop, not just waiting for doom or relief, but we are looking forward to his coming. We are looking forward to our Savior, the Bridegroom, coming to uh, establish himself with us because that's where we belong and that's where we already have, in a sense, a seat at the table but in the meantime, we have been left with a mission to make the gospel clear and plain, um, not just to the lost world evangelistically, but even to each other so that we are encouraged and we show hope in the midst of great duress so that the lost world may look upon our lives and ask, why do you have this hope? So that we can be ready in season and out of season to give them a reason for our hope, who is Christ and Christ alone. So it's a great series, I and mean, I just really enjoyed diving into that book, and I'm really looking forward to Second Peter, because it really is this um, follow-up, because it's the same group of churches in Asia Minor, which is modern-day Turkey, that larger area. Um, it really is also a follow-up in that, whereas in the first letter, they were facing persecution from the outside world, in the second letter, they are facing the difficulty and persecution of the infiltration of false teaching. And we'll get more into the details later, but basically um, in the Hellenistic thinking, the Greek world, there was so much thinking about the relief of comfort or the relief of pain and the pursuit of comfort that a lot of times those synchristic ideas of the gospel with the Hellenistic ideals would come together. And basically you would have what we mentioned this last Sunday, which was this idea that if God is good and God is for you and he's in control, then you're not going to suffer. You're not going to go through difficulty, whether external persecution or otherwise. Well, that false teaching comes in, and here you have the apostles recollecting the teachings of Christ who said that you will face trouble in this world, that the world will hate you as it hated him, and they are to live faithful lives. But so much of their material life was being plundered, and and so much was happening. And so it, it's a very appealing message. In fact, I think that it would, in many ways, I think you could say it's the birthplace of, you know, modern day prosperity preaching, which is, and teaching, which is basically the alleviating of pain and the pursuit of comfort. It's just using Jesus as the means to get there. So I'm really looking forward to it, but that's the backdrop of, of the culture of what's going on, the infiltration of this false teaching. And so what Peter ends up doing is just focusing on what is truth, who is the revealed Christ, he does have to defend part of the false teaching of the fact that they were saying, you know, really you made up these stories and he's saying, no, that was revealed by the Spirit. And then they go on to say, where is the promise of his coming? In fact, he hasn't come again. How do we even know that he was actually even raised from the dead? And Peter does a lot of that defense through chapter two and then reinstitutes again this, this surge of hope as he is charging the people of God to look forward to his coming in chapter three. So with all of that, I think, again, you know, it's relevant to where we are. I think, again, it is, it is something that even though we may not be those that tend towards being susceptible to prosperity teaching or preaching, I do think that we all have that human tendency. Otherwise, it wouldn't be something so pervasive throughout human history. This false teaching of wanting to avoid pain and pursue comfort. Um, we just do it in ways that, that may not appear as egregious when it comes to just how false the teaching is. But I think practically we all have that tendency towards, in a sense, prosperity. That we want to do it a moral way, we want to do it God's way, and we think that if, if God's in it, then surely this is what will happen as a result. So anyway, I think all that is really something that is uh, prevalent for all of us and that we need to battle through. 
But really the main thing and the thrust of it is Peter gives this framework at the end of his life. It's his last will and testament to Christians. Of Here's what he wants to impart on how to follow Christ faithfully um, in the world that is so opposed to you while you wait for his coming. And that's the part we're going to be emphasizing over and over and over again. And hopefully that will be a framework that really we adopt and becomes part of the culture of Milford Bible Church. So I'm really looking forward to that um, as we unpack that. And where that's going to get unpacked more than any place is in life groups. And so this coming Sunday is our fourth Sunday. So every second and fourth Sunday in the evenings, we have our, our life groups that meet um, in the area. And so I want to encourage you to go to the Grow Desk and you can get more information there um, when you're there on Sunday. Or you can even go online. We'll be putting up more of that information so that you can get information on the small groups and one that is in closest proximity to you. Now, look, I'll tell you right now, we're not forcing anyone to go where the closest group is. However, that is a desire that we have simply because we also desire multi-generations to be in groups together. And that's one of the blessings and the beautiful aspects of what we see in Scripture is the older imparting wisdom and life to the younger. And the younger encouraging the, the vigor and the, the zeal of, of the older as they are still living and breathing and pursuing Christ in this world with them. So... Anyway, I just want to encourage you to get involved. And so part of that is going to be we're going to be asking questions. We're going to be diving into the meaning of the text. So there will also online be uh, a list of questions uh, or some talking points that we'll, we'll use during small groups, at least uh, to give some kind of framework to our discussions from the sermon that morning and the week prior. And so I hope that you will participate this week. And uh, we should look forward to hearing the testimonies of how faith is being imparted to others' faith and encouraging us all to live faithful lives in this world together. So thanks again, and God bless you and keep you, and we will, Lord willing, see you on the weekend. Thanks.